I got Forex organizations. Bro ain't said nothing about Forex. We've been talking for three hours and telling me about mindset. How do I evaluate a stock chart? Who would you want to define you? Someone else or yourself? Whatever you do, um, give your heart to me and stay strong. Y'all listen. With me and your Lord. Yeah. Baby, you know anybody? Has anybody offered you to be in a pyramid scheme? Yeah, dog. How many times? Hold on, like four years ago. How many times? Like four times. Four times? Yeah. At what age? Like right out of high uh, school? Damn. So I got, I was 18, 19, right before I joined. So I was 22. Yeah. And then two years ago. Okay. Yeah, so that's four times. How many times you got, uh, man? Proposition? I want to say it's around now. Probably, probably like I don't got down like Fabian. Fabian, I know. But um, probably around the same like four or five times. Yeah, it was definitely like straight out of high school. I felt like man, I was getting so much calls right out of high school. Man, not even just pyramid scheme, but just like you have got the college offer. <clears throat> Just go ahead and make this payment real quick and we're gonna pitch you on. All types of scams. You know, yeah. people people get desperate. But I feel like it I wanna say I probably got proposition like three, three or four times. Nah, for real, for real. Proposition, probably like five, six. But actually went to a meeting and like sat through a lecture or something like that. It was like three times I wanna say. Oh, yeah. I sat through one meeting. I didn't really know what the business was. Yeah. Really, but <laughs> pretty much that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, all right, so we got to be careful today, right? Because we don't want to alienate people. We're not talking from a perspective of, you know, talking down to nobody, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Even though that's what I want to do. I got it. No, <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, we put nobody on class. Look, hey, today we're talking about, and we can't even necessarily call it pyramid schemes unless we're going to not say the name to the company right. we're talking about, right? So this is... Pyramid schemes, uh, multi-level marketing, network marketing, whatever you heard where you've been proposition, hey, join our organization and you gonna you gonna learn how to get rich, you know, you're gonna be a mogul by next year, you have the opportunity to run your own business. Um, it's all it's, it's several hallmarks that you hear when somebody's pitching this this opportunity to you. So how we going how we gonna frame this? Let's let's tell them what an actual pyramid scheme is. So we got the definition pulled up. I, I'll read it to the people. A pyramid is a form of investment which is illegal in the U.S. and elsewhere, in which each paying participant recruits two further participants, with returns being given to early participants. How many times are they gonna say participant? <laughs> All right, using money contributed by labels. Basically, I start a pyramid scheme. Right. right. I tell you. And Fabian, hey, y'all go get two more people. Y'all gonna jump out my little, I'm gonna call it a business, right? And y'all get two more people. Look, y'all get two more people, I'm gonna give y'all five, six, seven times your return. All you gotta do is make sure these people pay up. So you give me your little $200, you give me your little $200, get two more people that get, now I'm gonna give y'all 400 and I take the majority of the profit. Okay. So there's several different names of this, you know, you'll hear. But it's all the same concept. Basically, you're not really selling anything anytime it's a pyramid scheme. You're just somebody's telling you, I got this crazy investment opportunity. It's gonna run your money up five, six, seven, eight times. Um, so but what, what makes a pyramid scheme so much different than a corporation, any other business? Like by working Starbucks or so school. There's two things. Actually there's a lot of things. Yeah. But the main thing, one, the pyramid scheme is different from multi-level marketing. It's different from network marketing. But there's only one major difference. And we're going to get to that. But a pyramid scheme is different from a regular employment opportunity, a regular job, because your job doesn't require you to recruit. There's no burden of entry. Like, for you to work at Starbucks, they don't say, give us $500 and pay us $100 and most of you can work at Starbucks. Right. They don't say you gotta buy a certain amount of Starbucks frappuccinos every month in order to qualify to be a supervisor. No, right. if you're a good employee, you get promoted, you get a raise, okay. you get paid for your time. It's not commission based. You don't have to recruit people. 
So anytime you hear, you know, a business is saying, look, give me this much money up front. A lot of times today it's going to be a subscription attached to it after the fact. Every month you got to come up off some bread. We're going to teach you how to, how to leave your job and retire at 21 years old. Yeah. It's more than likely going to be um, a pyramid scheme, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what it's going to be. So um, there's another thing I want to hit people to before we really get into the crux of the conversation. And it's just because this is a, it's a pandemic, right? Yeah. Um, people getting desperate. A lot of people lost their jobs. People was already bad with money before the pandemic. So you know we got the How to Save 10K podcast. Yeah, okay, you ain't got 10K, look that up, go back. That's like episode 15 or 20, something like that. But yeah, a lot of people desperate. So they got this thing called um, a blessing circle, all right? They, that's what they call it. They call it a blessing circle. And not, the ID, you heard of this? Nah, go ahead. Have you heard of this? Nah. All right, so a blessing circle, right? They'll show a picture of what they call like the four elements. The outside element is fire. The next level is like water. The next level might be air, and the, the middle level is like earth or something like that, right? Each level got more and more people. So the center is one person. The next level is two people. Then those two people get another two people. And the last level is like eight people, right? They'll say, hey, give me $1,400 and then recruit two people to recruit two people, and you'll end up getting. Eleven thousand dollars. Okay. This sounds like a good investment opportunity, right? Right. But ultimately, what's going to happen is y'all going to run out of people to keep on funding the investment. So you got one person every time the, the complete circle gets filled. One person gets paid, but it's two, six, eight. That's fourteen people that haven't been paid yet. Right. So if they don't complete the last, the last, you know, ring of that circle, now you got thirteen or so people that just out fourteen hundred dollars. And I know one thing, like, if I lose $1,400, yeah. if I lose $500, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to fight. Yeah. So, hey, somebody propositioned me for that, you know, a few months ago. I said, it don't sound like a good idea because I don't want to be mad at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a point blank period, bro. I just don't want to be mad at you for no reason. But that's a, that's a legit pyramid scheme because they're not selling anything. It's just an investment opportunity where you put your money in, you get an absorbent return that you cannot get anywhere else unless you just got the perfect stop. Right. You feel what I'm saying? So um, beware of, they call it blessing circles, they call it soup soups, but it's not really a soup soup or a so so. That's how you have that. Good food or something. Soup right, it good. is, right? This, that's a practice that Caribbean people, some African people, like immigrants, oftentimes use because they want to avoid banks. Yeah. So they'll, everybody come together, there's 10 people, they put up $100 a month, and every month, one of those 10 people get $1,000. But the math is even, so it works out to where, like, you know, nobody is getting the raw end of the stick right. because everybody's putting their money up. Now, if someone stops, now we got a problem. But there's nobody that's not going to get broken off right. as long as everybody do what they're supposed to do. So, Let's get into it, man. So I guess transitioning from, you know, letting you guys know what the payment scheme is all about. Let's talk about, let's talk a little bit about um, the people that they target, right? Yeah. Who, who's getting these phone calls? Where is the pyramid schemes being developed at? Um, you know, man. Where are these ringleaders talking? <laughs> it's people, like, <laughs> you got people, man, that are incredible at selling things. Anything. I mean, you, you met people that's just. Yeah, I mean, we, got, we spoke to a, uh, a lady here not too long ago, uh -huh. um, and she mentioned that she signed up for a gym membership because she just wanted them to <laughs> stop talking, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. But, and that's one of the tactics that they use, too. Yeah. Like, if you ever go to one of those um, events, they'll, that joint will run three hours of a dude just talking about all the products that this company sells. Mm -hmm. It's like, I just want to get out of here. But I'm a natural skeptic. I was blessed and cursed with skepticism. Right. So if you go come and talk my head off, I'm going to be thinking the whole time about why it doesn't make sense. Right. You know what I'm saying? Poking holes in your story. But the type of people that they go after. Uh -huh. So, so multi-level marketing, network marketing, um, they pitch basically like get rich quick ideology. You know, it's like, 
they're looking for people who don't have a lot of capital, um, or maybe they do have a lot of capital, but they don't feel content with where they're at. So particularly in America, that's going to be people who don't have access to finances and financial literacy. So that's black people, resources. That's Asian people, right. recent immigrants, you know, Hispanic people. Um, basically anybody who is looking to make their way up and live the American dream, but they don't have an understanding of how they can get there. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and particularly people who don't come from money, um, who don't come from privilege, mm -hmm. and who don't have, you know, they don't have the scope of, of what their options are. You know, so um, the type of people who create multi-level marketing opportunities and pyramid schemes is like, they're the, they're the type of person you would aspire to be in a lot of ways. Like, this person's gonna be gregarious, they're gonna be talkative, they're gonna have a lot of charisma, they're gonna have enthusiasm, right. they're gonna make you believe that everything they're saying is fact. They're gonna mm -hmm. identify with you, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times these people will have rags to riches stories to where they were just like you right. at one point. It was like, you know, I was homeless, I had, my kid was on the way, my baby was on the right. way, you know, my girl, you know, she was mad at me, my mama didn't mm -hmm. trust me, all these other sob stories, and then, you know, you start to identify, right? Right. But then this person is wearing a $500, $1,000 suit, right. maybe they got a nice watch on, mm -hmm. and they're telling you how their life is now, and it's like, dang, like, they showing you the material objects, I've seen it before that they had one, um, it was like a, a trip based organization. So this dude was in, I don't know where he was at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was all over the globe, bro, like just with signs, like you should be here, like, you know, playing with tigers. I'm like, bro, how you start playing with tigers, bro? <laughs> but like, the type of thing they'll do it, just they, they show you I was here yeah. and now I'm here and you need to be here. But the thing is, bro, a lot of times, like, these organizations will have, they'll picture as if they're subject matter experts, right? Right. Um, but the whole time you're listening to them talk, they're not telling you nothing about the thing that they're selling. They're telling you about how your mindset has to change in order for you to be successful. They're telling you about, you know, how your habits have to change. Right. But they're not telling you what habits to adopt, what skills to learn, outside of some things that can't be quantified, like your motivation, like your efficacy, and your right. You know, your, your confidence and your ability to talk to people. But I mean, they got Forex organizations. Bro ain't said nothing about Forex. We've been talking for three hours. You're telling me about mindset. How do I evaluate a stock chart? Right, still haven't learned anything. You know, I was, mm -hmm. I was at one, the dude was selling health products, mm -hmm. but bro was like 350. Like he was selling protein yeah. shakes yeah. and <laughs> sacred bottles. Yeah. Bro is overweight, like, you ain't said foot in the gym in decades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how are you really gonna be a subject matter expert? Um, but these people will make you believe they know everything about what they're talking about. How, like, how is these pyramid schemes staying afloat? Like, how, how is the? They are legal, right? Pyramid schemes are legal. They are legal. But we know, I mean, there's a loophole since I mean, right. we're still getting phone calls, baby on. Got phone calls. <laughs> I got phone calls. You got phone calls. There's a meeting going on right now. Somebody sitting down right now is in this. More than likely true. It's more than likely true. The way that pyramid schemes um, and MLMs, what they call them, network marketing organizations, yeah. are different. And the reason that the MLMs are able to keep operating to this day is because they technically sell products. Uh -huh. So they might have you know, health and wellness products. They might have specialized knowledge or skills that they're they're claiming they're gonna teach you. Right. They might not they might have, you know, affiliations with companies where they'll offer you energy or they'll offer you cell phone service, they'll offer you, you know, cable, all types of stuff. Things that you could probably get on your own. You know what I'm saying? But because you don't have that specialized knowledge to know, oh this is just like that. You know, or I'm not making money because I'm paying the subscription every month and I pay the upfront fee to get a discount. So now the burden is on you to recoup. It's like you're already starting behind the eight ball. Um, but the reason that they're able to continue to exist is because they offer services. That's why they can't be stopped. 
until the bottom falls out. Right. So the, the thing is, um, the farther you go along, so they say one person gets two people, two people get two more people. Um, but in the meetings, a lot of times they'll say, I want you to go out and recruit five people, you know, minimally five people. Really, that's not enough. You need to do more. But if you get your five, and then that five is their five, and then that five is their five, that's 155 people. Just like that. Right. Yeah. But if you keep going, right, let's say you get your five. Right. That five get their five. That five get their five. And y'all do that 10 more times, you're going to exceed the global population. Right. There's going to be 12 billion people in your pyramid. <laughs> yeah. So it's like... Cash flow. It's unsustainable, and the reason that it's unsustainable is because the structure of, and this is where we get to the really messed up part about the organization is like, or these organizations, is the fact that you cannot, like, you cannot make money off of commissions. Like, you might make a little bit, but I mean, the pay structure for some of these companies might be a 1% commission off of each sale. So unless you sell in, in bulk, you know, and you right, raising up the ranks because they'll raise your commission the more sales you make, the more people you have under you. But the whole goal of the organization is to get more people recruited into the organization because they make money off of membership, yeah. intake fees, people selling their products. Um, and primarily that, that recruitment is the thing that's going to drive your, your bag up. Mm-hmm. So that's why it gets really predator, predator prey relationship. Like, well, these people are pitching to you that you're going to be rich off of selling things, but then when you understand, like, oh, the whole goal here is to do recruitment, now you're getting more people into this thing where they can't make money unless they recruit people. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why they're able to, to sustain themselves to a certain extent. So with direction, right, these people that are getting sucked in to these means. I mean, let's talk a little bit about the people that's actually signing up. Like, what mindset do you have to be in to actually go through and say, hey, man, this, this sounds like a good opportunity for myself. Um, you know, I really want my life to change. Yeah. So, like, what do you want our audience to know in terms of what mindset, you know, what kind of goals, what kind of lifestyle you need to be living not to get sucked into these pyramid schemes? That's what it is, bro. Like, 50% of, 58% of Americans don't have a thousand dollars in their bank account. Mm. That's why they're so getting that phone them. call. Right. They already hitting that. They getting that. What's that? Is it dopamine? What? They getting that dopamine response. Yeah. They, it's quick. that eureka moment. Like I've been waiting for this. Yeah. Uh, Say it again. They're gonna charge you five hundred. They're gonna charge you five hundred. You ain't even got five hundred. Right. So it's like they they waiting for an opportunity. Right. But that's that's part of the problem is that they're waiting for an opportunity. Like it's gonna fall from the sky. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I've been in that position before where yeah. I was just waiting for something. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's a vulnerable place to be in. Right. I know when I was in that vulnerable place, you know, I was all ears for something, you know, somebody's about to tell me I can make, you know, one thousand, two thousand, three thousand, <laughs> four thousand. All you gotta do is get four or five people. Yeah. I can sign right here. Hey man, you like I know four or five people. Right. You know, um, I guess, but when, it, when I really started to look at it, I understood that it's definitely not going to be something long term. Um, it's not sustainable. Right, right. Because, I mean, ultimately, we, y'all, what, what people oftentimes, when the ones, have, and the ones that have inventory, they have terms for, I mean, bro, it's so crazy the psychology behind this. We got to get into psychology too. But they call people independent business owners, right? Right. And they have multiple tiers of you know titles that they'll give you based on how many commissions you get yeah. and how many recruits you get. Um, this is absorbent, like, because they gotta continue to create positions because there's new levels being generated every single day. Right. But they'll call you like garage qualified. They got terms for this in the industry, where you know, in order to maintain your rank, you have to do a certain amount of volume every single month. And if you fall off, you lose your rank. But they made it so important in your mind to sustain that position. You know what I'm saying? And that stature that you just end up buying the inventory thinking I'm going to make it up on the back end. Right. But every month you're doing this now. Because ain't nobody looking for what you're selling. They ain't even use the first load you know, dropped off at their house. Right. Um, so there's it's plenty of people like, um, 
you know, businesses like Mary Kay, where they just have a whole garage full of products. 24, oh, what's it called, Herbalife, they'll have a whole garage full of Herbalife products that they haven't sold yet. Right. Almost like your, your house is a warehouse. And, um, but let's get to the psychology. You, know, like, you already started to touch on the place people are in right. when they signed up for things like this. Um, and we said they're, they're in a vulnerable state, they're looking for an opportunity, and they don't know how they're going to get their next check. They don't have a lot of money in that bank. Right. Not a lot of direction. Not too sure what you know decisions they get ready to make with their quite possibly they probably don't have either they don't have the discipline to go to the next level or they don't have the time because they have too many commitments. Mm -hmm. So when they when they put this they dangle this fruit in front of you, right? They dangle this opportunity in front of you, it's like, oh you think it's gonna be easy to get rich off of this thing because this person is making it seem like all I gotta do is change my mindset and I'm gonna make more money. But then, when you get into it, you know how hard sales is? Right. How much time it takes to cold call 100 people in your contact list? Was you just telling me, who was this time? Oh, my boy was telling me. He actually signed up for one of these corporations, and he got into it. They was telling him, like, the whole spiel. This is what you say to people. This is how you contact them. This is what you, you know, offer as the products and services. Um, they told him, go to your contacts. Call every single person to you. <laughs> First off, well, how intrusive that is, bro. Don't call me. If you my yeah. boy, you my you my my dog, don't call me talking about what you're about to sell me if it ain't yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're making a 5% commission. I'm, I'd rather give you the bread than buy something where you make a 5%. But, um, yeah, they're talking to people who might not have the time or the discipline to really take it out to the next level. And then on top of that, they're saying you need to change your mindset, which makes you feel like you're inadequate if you're not rich, right. if you're not benefiting off of this system. So it's like, it's a loop. You know, it's, a, it's like a, a psychotic circle that you're in. I don't have the discipline, right? I don't yeah. have the time. Yeah. Um, but because you don't have the time or the discipline, you can't be successful. So you just feel bad about yourself at the end of the day. Uh, and there's some people, honestly, bro, I'm not going to sit here and say nobody can, can eat off of this. But it's a select few. Yeah. Because the lower you get on the pyramid, the lower you get on that triangle, the less of an opportunity that you have to make money. So how, I know I've got a whole bunch of stuff. What else I've got? Uh, we was talking about um, delayed gratification yeah. as well, right? So, you know, when you're in that mindset, yeah. right, um, you know, searching, right, searching for something more, Touch on delayed gratification, like, what is delayed gratification? It's the thing that, that no one learns at an early enough age to where um, they can make, they can tap into it automatically. Like, by the time you learn about it, it's, it's not too late, but you're so set in your ways that it's hard to make that shift. Mm -hmm. um, but if you had it, if you understand it, then you know, like, there is no get rich quick. Right. Regardless of how fast it takes, the energy and effort it takes to get to that point where you're making money and you got residuals, you got properties, you got different opportunities popping up all the time, you gotta put in that leg work. Right. But people see people who are already where they wanna be and they associate, oh, they did this, so if I do this, I'll be where they are. But they don't know all the countless hours it took for them to get there. And they don't know if that person that's talking to them is being honest about where they actually are. Right, right, right. You know, anybody can take a picture in front of a Lamborghini. All you gotta do is, you can rent one, you can find one in the city and take a yeah. picture in front of it. You know, you can make your life look a lot better than it actually is. You know, a lot of people who, you know, they're making it seem one way, but it's really not what they're making it seem like. Mm -hmm. um, so that delayed gratification will, it will prevent you from being so vulnerable because one, you know, Anything that seems too good to be true is probably too good to be true. But on top of that, bro, we already put you on game of how you can become a millionaire if you just wait. Like, and that's one option. You know what I'm saying? That's that's one way. That Roth IRA, 6K a year, and I look five. I look at like delayed gratification as um, trusting the process, right? For sure. You know, you may have a roadmap out for yourself right now, right? Um, 
there's a lot of things when you have a roadmap that you're gonna have to become ignorant to, right? Yeah. You ain't gonna be, you aren't able to dibble and dabble into everything that's going on, right? Anything that they said dangling from your face, what you say, I don't want that. I don't want that. <laughs> you gotta know what you want. You gotta know what you want, right? Um, yeah. In a sense, you gotta stick to your guns. Yeah, man, and, and stay and stay on the path that you have written out for yourself, and just execute that. You talking about purpose, right? You talking about purpose, but I think we we aren't taught to identify what our purpose is. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that goes back to direction. Um, you know, find you know have that direction where you want to go to, right? Um, which is your purpose, right? Right, and you stay on that. You stay on that. It's gonna be. There's gonna be some things that you learn along the way that you may pick up, or right? you may um, you may change whatever goal you had in place. Right. Um, but it's the same but it's general trajectory. Right. right. And then it's like when you have that purpose, it'll be hard for somebody to convince you to sell something that you really don't care about. Right. You know, it'll be hard for somebody to convince you to recruit people to do something that you really might not believe in for. And that's where we at right now. That's true. I mean, you can't call my phone. I know they can't call Fabian. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. they can't call your phone. Nah, man. bro. They couldn't call me before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they called me now, but they're going to be sadly disappointed, man. Eight years back, I'm going to listen to what they had to say. Yeah, and you know what? And sometimes I would be in the room yeah. feeling bad because I felt like my skepticism might have been taking me away from an opportunity. Mm. Um, and that's another trick that, that the play on was like, you know, you're not open-minded. They'll say, the, one of the first things they'll say is, your friends, gonna, they're going to look at you like you're crazy, and you need to not listen to them. Because they're not rich, so how are they going to tell you how to get rich? Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and the type of person that's going to sign up for this organization is an open-minded person that cares about financial freedom. You know, all the buzzwords that you hear. You know right. what I'm saying? They want to retire early. You know, financial literacy, all this. Yeah. Bro, really, what are we talking about, bro? Because anytime I've asked anybody at those meetings, like, some real stuff, this is what we're going to get into. Show me a bank statement. Yeah. So, okay, you do Forex. Show me a trade. Yeah. Let me see one. I want to see, oh, how much you made today? Yeah. How much you made last week? Put it on live. Let's go on Zoom. Let's go on Zoom. Okay, take me to Say one me. day. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And if you fail, look, hey, just for the fact that you put me on that one day, I'll come back tomorrow. Show me what you do tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Right. If you could prove to me that you could actually do this, bro, you think I wouldn't sign up if you're making uh, two racks, three racks a day? You know what I'm saying? But it's it's the shiesty people, bro. We know we was day, well, I was day trading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now we had a whole meeting. Bro, on day well, how he was going to teach people how to day right. trade because right. I thought I figured it out. Right. <laughs> this was no organization teaching me. It was somebody put me on. I said, hold up, I make 2% a day off the stack. That's 21K and I'm going through it in my yeah. mind, right? But I'm going paper trades. People don't know that you can go on, on almost any platform and practice. It's what's called paper trading. Right. So like, it's a lot of Forex and uh, network marketing organizations. They will show a recruit who knows nothing about trading, Forex, none of that, a paper trade where they made 1300 or 2000 and say, yeah, this is my account real quick. Look at it. Don't look at it no more. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, bro, the, the type of tactics that people will use because they know ultimately, I have no idea what I'm doing. I got to get people underneath me. Like, that's the type of thing where it's like, you know, I really want to put people on front street and say, you doing this, this is wrong. You know what I'm saying? But it's not the platform, right. this ain't the time, and I'm not trying to alienate people. I'm just trying to put people on game. If you're not already in this, like, this ain't the way. This ain't the way. And if you feel like this is the only way you're going to be successful, you got to really sit back and define what your purpose is. Like, mm -hmm. your purpose is not 4X. Right. Your purpose is not skin cream. You got to go back. That's you gotta go back and find that direction, right? Be resourceful, man. We have Google. <laughs> For real, we have Google. There's many things you can spend your free time um, doing. 
and finding your purpose is one of them, right? Yeah, uh, can't lay around having everybody just throw stuff at you. People are out here, as soon as you get paid, right, they got their hands out. Right. And there's hands out for you to hand that money over, right? Everywhere yeah. you go, ads, advertisements, yeah. you go on the internet, you pick up your phone, somebody trying to sell you something. Absolutely. Um, so you gotta have, you gotta have that firewall up. For you. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta have that filter. Yeah, um, so, um, and that filter really gets, really, really gets strong when you have that direction, you have that purpose. And you start stacking wins. Right. That's the other thing, like, people been struggling for. I get it. Like, I get it, bro. If I wasn't, I'm not smarter than everybody. I'm smart. I ain't gonna sell myself short. Right. But if I wasn't, I didn't believe in myself. I just know I might be susceptible to these pictures because these people, I'm not going to lie, bro, these dudes was charismatic in front of the room. Yeah. I'm like, damn, bro, am I really like, why is this not connecting with me fully? Like, why am I looking around? Why is everybody else in this room looking at this dude with their mouth open? Like, oh my God. It makes sense. This makes sense. I'm like, why am I I'm looking around? Are you dead serious? Like, <laughs> what's going on? Like, yeah. Why am I the only person looking around like this? At, and at a certain point, I'm thinking like, bro, did they plant everybody in here but me? <laughs> <laughs> hey, like, if they did, hey. and that's solid, man. That's <laughs> real. Dedication. Hey, that's dedication. They dedicated. That's how I be feeling this like, you know, I've been there several times. One time I didn't feel that way because it was uh, my people from Laurel. All of us knew each other. We left the house. Eric, literally, as soon as they was like, look, y'all could join or y'all don't want to join. You know, if you're not going to join, go ahead and leave. But everybody left. <laughs> <laughs> we was outside the crib like, bro, what the heck? <laughs> I'm like, man, come on, man. Look, hey, I ain't going to say no names, right? Yeah. In my, um, in my neighborhood, right? And this person know who they are, bro. I ain't going to say no names. They said, hey, pull up to the crib, we having a kickback. I said, you know, I don't really know this person like that, but I'm gonna pull up to the crib. Mm-hmm. Hey, in my neighborhood, I know them, whatever. Go to the crib, while I walk in the door, um, there's a few people there, right? There's two cute girls in the, in the job. I'm like, all right, bet. I'm, you know, it's lit. Yeah. Um, and ain't nobody talking to them. So I'm like, I'm talking to them. I don't care, I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna, sit, I'm gonna say something. Yeah. I ain't had no game, I'm just sitting down, I'm talking. I'm, look, ain't nobody gonna talk. I'm gonna talk. <laughs> and then I'm just like 30 minutes into a conversation with them two, and um, you know, they're real lively, you know, they nice. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm I must have got some game or something overnight. Like, I ain't never got this much play. Yeah. And I'm just my stomach growling, like, bro, you gonna have a kickback, you ain't got no drinks, no food, what's going yeah. on? Yeah. Then the one that, that invited everybody to the kickback stand-ups, they stop. <laughs> They start tearing up. They like, you know, my parents don't really support my 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 desires. You know, I want to travel the world. They about to cry. I'm like, bro, are you about to tell us you got cancer? Like, what's yeah, going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't remember this story. Yeah, and and then ultimately it comes out that they're trying to be in like a. Um, a, a trip organization, like yeah. basically you get paid to take trips or get discounts on trips, but they have to sign everybody in the room up in order to get a discount. And somehow they selling cars through the organization. It's like completely unrelated things. Right, right, right. And then the two girls that I was talking to for about a half hour that I thought was giving me play was in on that. Yeah. They stood up and gave a whole pitch. I'm like, bro, y'all wasn't even feeling me. That's crazy. <laughs> So you know I'm a dick. Yeah. I'm just waiting for you. Hey, but the first one that pulled my pants up. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Time to go. Yeah, bro. That's basically like, I mean, I could sit here and talk about it all day, bro. But bottom line, like, understand, let's give them a synopsis, right? Pyramid schemes are oftentimes founded by people who are incredibly confident, almost to a fault. Like if you look up the definition of, of sociopaths and you know the type of people that you might run into at the top levels of a pyramid, and you could look it up, like Bernie Madoff, you know what I'm saying? 
This is the person who was then there responsible for the stock market crash in the 2009. Yeah. He was the founder of a pyramid scheme, but people who were around him thought he was so trustworthy, like he was showing up to people's funerals, acting like he cared about them, but he drained their entire life savings. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that people that do multi-level marketing are like that. I'm just saying the type of person that would create an organization where you cannot make money off of doing all of this legwork and you have to recruit people to do the same thing, that's incredibly inconsiderate. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, wow. And then the fact that they target black and brown people who don't come from money, aren't financially literate a lot of times, might not have the, the education to really understand what a pyramid scheme is or what a, a pyramid corporation is. Right. Um, it's just, it's predatory, bro. Um, that's why I feel like it was the need to talk about on this platform because we care about financial literacy. We care about people being mentally well, physically well, mm -hmm. um, spiritually in tune. Yeah. Go back go back and check out, you know, the previous podcast, man. It's gonna talk, about, talk a lot about direction. Right, yeah, for mindset, sure. purpose, um, and those are the things that really is going to have you reflect a lot of that BS coming your yeah, way. You're going to be in the matrix. Yeah. You're going to be so locked in on your purpose. You ever seen Biker Boys? Nah. Tyrese, bro. Tyrese and um, Old Boy. Yeah, you know, the same cat. cast from, from Biker oh, Boy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Old Boy was, uh, it was like his dad was, they were riding bikes, bro. All I'm saying is they had tunnel vision in the whole movie. Tyrese is trying to figure out how to get locked in like his yeah. father was, and um, at the end of the movie, he get the tunnel vision. Yeah. And at that time, it's like you can't hear nothing, you can't see nothing, you're just so locked in on where you need to be. Yeah. You know what they do there with horses? Put the blinders on them. You already know. There's one of them locked in. You already know. You got one mission. And if you see it through, you see it through, you get to the other side. You get to where you want to be at. Um, you had that delayed gratification, right? All that hard work will pay off. Yeah. Um, what's the thing you can mean somebody with? Anything else we need to say, bro? If somebody approached me trying to get you to join the organization by paying them money, you got to uh, recruit people to get in the organization, and you got to pay a monthly fee to stay in the organization, Yeah. don't do it. Man. <coughs> Last thing I got for people, man, ask questions. For sure. All right, ask questions um, and do your research. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Somebody give you some information, look it up. <laughs> yeah, look it up so ASAP. Look it up don't, ASAP. You don't have to say yes because you feel pressure. Nah. Like, you don't have to just, you know, I'm, maybe I'm being too skeptical. It don't matter. Go home, come back. If you still want to do that two, three right. days later, do it and find out. Put your, right. put your hand on the stove. And, and if, you, if you do have that, you know, that personality where you feel like, People can pressure me. Yeah. Um, there's something I'll get back to you. Right? It's not a yes, it's not a no. I'll get back to you. Go home, do that research. Oh, man. And if you are in a presentation and they say, this is not a pyramid scheme, it's a pyramid <laughs> scheme. <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> Out of way. This is not a very <laughs> By the way, sign up. We, we have got, we got a class coming, right? We're gonna teach you how to get rich quick. Real quick. Hey, I'm talking about one meal in the bank tonight. Oh what Rick Ross say? Last night I couldn't win one meal. This morning, 150. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say the next part. Can't say the next part. Yeah, man. Hey, God bless, man. Hey, and if you think we're lying, man, we done closed the joint out like eight times. Hey, if you think we're lying, do your research. Look, if you go to a company and it sounds anything like the meeting that we told y'all, you know, the person real Gregorius, they on the stage telling you they write the richest story and all you got to do is recruit five people. They get five people and then now you got 150 people. Look, go home, type the company in on Google, and if it says is X company a pyramid scheme, guess what? It's a pyramid scheme, bro. <laughs> man, I'm just concerned for my lost ones out there, man. Lost the ones, young man. ones coming up, man, that's getting sucked in to the to the you know the social media to the to the internet. The internet is a beautiful thing, you know. I'm a network. I love the internet. I love the internet. Yeah. 
But man, man, it, it's tearing some people up, man. Because it, it's, it's putting Ten all the kids. things in front of them that they yeah. want um, every single day. Take control of your life. Find the resources out there that can help improve your circumstances. Look, so like take I, 6K and invest in the index fund. If you're 20 years old, by the time you retirement age, it's going to be over 400K. You know what I'm saying? And in between that time, compound interest. Learn to skip compound interest. Look, Six hours on that jump. Wonder why my life. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, waking up like, why? 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 I can't go and turn to this guy. Oh my God. Bro. Oh, best in this game. <laughs> bro, you ain't streaming. <laughs> ain't streaming. I ain't get no money. <laughs> Mama looking at me. Sideways. Third game, man. That's what I tell my cousins, bro. Yo, people, you're 19 years old. All right, you just graduated. Woo, woo. Let you turn 22 and you ain't did nothing. Looks gonna start changing, perfect. Man, you know about me, that? For me, it was 20. Nah. You know about that? Hey, you me. Man, them looks started changing, bro. I was 22, 21 years old in the crib. I was just looking at them like, oh, oh, yeah, dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. You the crib? Man, when I joined, I was 22. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, man. man. Man, I was getting them looks, man. 20, 20. I'm over to shoot this throw little messages in there. Yeah, you know, um, such and such then finished up. Uh, nah, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn. And I'm on the game head sitting up. I'm waking up at 11.30 <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> I'm like, that's cool, but you know what I'm oh, saying? God, right. I know I'm going to figure it out. Yeah. There was so many days, bro. I would be asleep. I ain't had nothing to do. And then my mom would call me right like 11 30, 10 30. Yeah. I got my retainer out. Take the retainer out. <clears throat> Hello? <laughs> Try to act like you were up in Try to act like you been up around doing stuff. Bro, I got drool everywhere, bro. It's just like, damn, bro. Man. Yeah, man. It's start looking at you like, like you ain't, you ain't done nothing. I used to make sure that the house was good. Like, I ain't do nothing. Man, they got to a point, I ain't even, I don't even want to leave my room. Like, I, I'm just a ghost here in the house. I don't bother nobody. Hell yeah, don't bother me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Home. But you're still getting it, though. Yeah, still, yeah. You trying to tiptoe around the Man, house. I'm telling you, I know every creek in the house. I don't want nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I don't want nobody to say it to me. Bro, you know my stairs right by the uh, yeah. dining room, bro. It's like 13. Steps right there, man. I would be it'd be two o'clock in the morning, but I'm up, so I'm hungry. I skip like seven grown. steps. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thirty grown years man old. Man, man. I was stiff as. <laughs> <laughs> and then my mom, and hey. my mom bust the door. Open. What are you doing? I gotta get up in the morning. <laughs> I'm like, ma, you ain't even hear that. <laughs> 40 years old, creeping around. Bro, then I come back up the steps, skip eight, eight of them jumps. <laughs> Man, ain't that crazy? Off. Bro, I'm on all fours, crawled into my room, still squeaking. How's the biscuit in my mouth? Yeah. <laughs> With a bullet in your mouth. I got a bullet in your mouth. I'm crawling. I forgot something downstairs. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> can't go back. I got to go back because of something moved. Uh, right. I got to left a light on with this shit. <laughs> Damn, and that's bro. crazy though how you go from 18 to 35 in two, three years. Yeah, man. <laughs> but that's the, that's the problem, bro. That's why we be in them situations, bro. Yeah. That's why we be in them situations because, like, you graduate from high school, nobody puts you on game, bro. Direction. Bro, my high school professors, bro, it was, I can count on one hand how many high school professors was actually, like, and not giving you everything, just, like, trying to make you do right. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I really can't remember nobody at the top, but I'm sure it was a couple of people. But it's like, damn, bro, 
we just did a mentoring uh or a mentoring group, right? Ten mm-hmm. weeks. Put them on like anything I'm thinking of, I'm putting them on or something. Right. But it's like, how do you graduate high school? You've been in school for 12 years. Nobody puts you on the like, yeah, you might want to start a retirement account. Simple stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? You might want to learn a skill because if you don't learn a skill, you ain't getting no job. But they can fire you easily. You feel like Brock sat here, Brock sat here two weeks ago, one week ago, whatever. Yeah. And said, his dad said, look, bro, get a skill. You don't have to go to college. Boom, boom. He might have to be a truck. Now nah, he's driving business. Hey, <laughs> look, I might not want to drive a truck. But somebody yeah. need to put you on like... Put your own game, too. Yeah, bro. So you can't be taken advantage of. That's all it is. And honestly, look, I thought about this. I was thinking, like, bro, am I participating in any uh, pyramid schemes? Like, you know, type of structure. Yeah. And I thought about, like, damn, is the NFL a pyramid scheme? Obviously, I ain't in the league. But, you know, I'm just thinking yeah. about it. Like, man, is that a pyramid? Nah, it ain't because the players don't have to recruit. But then what about college football? Bingo. Yeah. Pyramid scheme, bro. Like, it's... Only the people at the top get paid. The players are working for free, yeah. and they putting out this product. They are recruiting other players. Mm-hmm. They going to recruit the visitors to other states. Like, bro, then they yeah, gotta come good. back. They coming back as boosters. Chant Bailey going to Miami. Like, hey, mm-hmm. bro, you gotta come to this. Yeah. <laughs> come on, man. Every Ray Lewis, yeah. bro. Yeah. It's a pyramid scheme, bro. It's like it's. I don't know what the hell I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, we talk about this forever, bro. But it's just, they don't want to take them student athletes. Yeah, man. We just got to be, we got to, we got to be armed with more tools, more knowledge, more resources, more discernment so that we don't ever have to get to that place. I even got empathy for the people at the top that, you know, you got 500 people below you. Like, let's say you were just good at selling people on this. Yeah. And now you got 500 people on it, you know they ain't making no money. How you walk around with that burden? If you're not a sociopath, you're not a psychopath, where you actually have some sympathy, some empathy for people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You walking around with that burden, you got money in your pocket, yeah, you got, okay. But what are you really doing, bro? You got scammers, man, they don't care. Yeah, it is. Robbers, killers, scammers. I don't care. I really want somebody, for real, for real, I would love for somebody that's in one of these organizations to come on the podcast, bro. Come on here with black mask on. I don't care what they do. Change your voice up. Look, if somebody <laughs> could come on this podcast and show me, look, I'm making money. The people under me is making money. Mm-hmm. Legitimately, they can't do it. They can't do it. They can't, can't nobody do it. That's somebody I want to put on black so bad, bruh. Because I don't found some shit out. Yeah. I found out. You know, posing like they, they run a businesses, right? Yeah. Like they got a business. They put their name on the shit. But then the parent company... They really under a parent company because I'm looking at the the, the graduation ceremony because I told you I went deep on it, right? Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the graduation ceremony for their organization, but they got a whole another company's name on the stage. What the fuck is this company? Yeah. I look at it, it says boom, boom, boom. I look up boom, 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 and it's like, oh, Donald Trump support them? Oh, word. Oh, they was under investigation by the Federal Trade Commission for being a pyramid scheme? Yeah. And now you on IG talking about, nah, I'm putting people on the real game. Like, you give them real estate advice. You're not no real estate expert, bro. You not know you're doing credit card. Okay, I get it. You got it. But do the people under you have it? Right, right. I could go on for days. I done said this like five times. I'm putting all this shit in the episode. <laughs> Let somebody, look, somebody come on the podcast. I promise you, bro. It ain't nobody going to hear this shit, man. Let me say it clean. I'm going to put it on IG. Yeah. If somebody hears this and they would like to come on the podcast and detest anything I'm saying and say, you know, prove how their organization is a pyramid-like structure but not actually a pyramid scheme, I would love to have a conversation. We're going to be civil. You know what I'm saying? We're here to build an understanding. We're here to enlighten our audience. And, you know, we might have different, you know, positions, but we open to them enlightening. That's all I got to say. God bless. God bless. Fitness club with the kids, bro. We love the kids. <laughs> kids, man, man cut the camera off, man.